This is called the current balance experiment. It's a method for determining the magnetic flux density for a magnet. This is the magnet that I'll be doing that for. This is a major magnet, so it's quite a powerful permanent magnet. I've suspended it here over a weighing balance here. The reason for that is this is a very heavy magnet, so if I place that directly on the weighing balance, it will exceed the range for that weighing balance. So that's the reason for suspending the magnet above the weighing balance. I'll then be passing current through my circuit here, which goes through an ammeter, variable resistor, and then through this section of wire, which is suspended on this wooden platform. I'll explain that in a moment, and then it comes back around, so that's back to the power supply. What will happen is when I pass current through the wire, this section of wire traveling through the magnetic field is gonna experience a magnetic force. Now the current is coming out in this direction, so using Fleming's left hand rule, I've got current going this direction. The field is, the other side is north, the side nearest to us is south. The field is towards us, so the force will be down into the weighing balance. So the magnetic field is going to push the current carrying wire downwards. It's only going to happen when the current is on because it's not a current carrying conductor until that point. This is a close-up view of the wire travelling through the magnet. So you can see this is the wire in red here on top of this wooden platform. And this is the north pole of the magnet. This is the south pole. So looking at it from a uh, close-up with Newton uh, with uh, Fleming's left hand rule. We have the field direction going from here to here, so it's this direction. And then we have the current direction is traveling from this side to this side, conventional current. So the conventional current is away from us on, from the perspective of the camera. That gives us a downward force if you apply Fleming's left hand rule as I did earlier. So, so I've, as you can see, I've suspended this piece of wire on wood so that it's non-magnetic. I can have it in the presence of the magnetic field and not have any purely magnetic effects there. And the wire is going along this piece of wood here. So the wood is underneath, so the wire is going to be pushed into the wood. Then these blocks will be pushed down into the weighing balance. And that wire is roughly level, is pretty much level with the middle of the two poles of the magnet. So it's right in the middle of our section of uniform field there. Now, when I turn this on, you'll see that we will indeed get a reading registered on our weighing balance. Let's just zero that. So it will register a mass because the wire is being pushed into the weighing balance. So there we go, that's reading 0 0.48 grams currently. It's just a small current flowing at the moment. You would have seen the current come up on the ammeter. So I can vary the amount of current using my variable resistor over here. Maximum current at that end, minimum current at this end. I'm gonna have a look at what the maximum and minimum values I can get from this setup are and then I'll choose some systematic values in that range. I'll then get a range of data for the current and the mass. The mass I can then use to determine the force. So I'll, get a, I'll be able to analyze the relationship between force and current. So let's just zero this again. Okay. So if I turn this on, this is my minimum current. That's 0 0.46. And maximum current is over 3.5, so it's about 3.86. So I can get the range I was hoping for, which was 0 0.5 up to 3. So I can get six values in that range. What I'm going to do is start at, start at 3. And I'm going to work my way down to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to reverse that and go back up so that I can repeat my values. Because 3 amps being the largest current, I'm going to get the most heat produced during the experiment at that point. I will uh, do that first and last so that uh, the wire is not getting too hot with me doing all my high current readings at the same time. 
So I'm going to take those readings and then I can put those into my spreadsheet and analyse what's going on. You can see there's a, particularly at these high current values, there's a lot of fluctuation. So I'm having to go for where it's roughly hovering around the three. <laughs> First set of data, now I'm doing my repeats. second set of data I retook this reading after getting a significantly different value to the first reading so I've got my current and mass readings I now need to analyze those convert these into force and plot a graph to determine the magnetic flux density which I'll do in a new video